All right, everybody, today we will talk about epilepsy treatment. Uh, can you tell me in the, uh, uh, because you know about a lot of classes of drugs, right? So can you tell me in the text message that, what do you think? Uh, okay, good, Tuba. Uh, all right, guys, I want you all, okay, to tell me in the message, okay, to tell, tell me in the chat box uh, that, how exactly you would be treating epilepsy? Come on, guys. Because right now, you have learned a huge number of classes of uh, drugs. So you must tell that what should be the mechanism. I'm waiting for your responses in the chat box. And take, beta, look, when we are dealing with epilepsy treatment, okay, so epilepsy is already convulsion, okay? So you, even when you're saying it's anti-convulsion, so it's, a, it's already a huge class of medicine, okay? Uh, for example, uh, you would commonly hear anti-convulsion drug or anti-epilepsy drug, okay? That is AED, all right? Uh, all right, Anusha said benzodiazepine, very good. Epilepsy, Rabia said epilepsy means phobia. Brain conditions that cause damage to brain, such as tumor can cause epilepsy. Rabia, first of all, who told you that epilepsy means phobia? Epilepsy, I don't know. If, I don't think so, it means phobia. Because phobia means that you are hating something, okay? And this is not a hate or love situation. This is more kind of a... Uh, uh, condition in which the body is jerking and everything. Tuba beta, AED refers to anti-epileptic drug, okay? So stop Googling and start thinking, what would you give? Amen said Caesars. Beta, is that what you'll give to the patient? Anusha said, drugs that induce inhibitory neurotransmitters. Uh, Anusha, if I had a recording of clapping, so I would have played that for you right now, because yes, we are going to do that, right? Guys, in my last lecture, I told you all that epilepsy is all about uh, the neurotransmissions getting crazily excited, okay? And uh, because of the excitation, there are the epileptic jerks and everything, all right? And when we are the trying to uh, diminish epilepsy, okay? So here we are talking about the anti-epilepsy. It means that we would, we can give two kinds of drugs, right? Either the one that would diminish the excitation, right? And how would they diminish the excitation? What do you think? How would they diminish the excitation? How would you think they would diminish the excitation? What kind of medicine can I give in order to block excitation, guys? What kind of a receptor I should block? I've been teaching you for so long about this thing. I showed even you the receptor, how it works and everything in my previous classes. Remember that NMDA receptor that had calcium in it and then... Uh, uh, sorry, that had magnesium in it. And as it was getting out influx of uh, excitatory uh, ions were there, right? And that, that influx of the ions was due to uh, the neurotransmitter, the excitatory neurotransmitter that is called glutamate, right? Okay, so my one strategy could be that my brain is producing excitatory neurotransmitters and I'm trying to block its action so I would give medicine uh, such that uh, that would block the excitatory receptors, right? The, okay, the other action could be that I induce inhibitory neurotransmitter, like Anusha said, that I would give the medicines that would enhance inhibition, right? Inhibitory effects. Can you guys tell me name of class of drugs that produce inhibitory effects. You studied that already in antidepressants. Sorry, 
sorry you studied that in hypnotics hypnotic yeah sedative and hypnotic drugs come on guys now what more hint should i give very good anusha look i am clapping right now for you very good anusha high five to you so this benzodiazepine and barbiturates okay this is a class of drugs that we can use okay in order to treat epilepsy right chalen ji class khatam just kidding okay it's not all right uh now uh, okay i've already talked about all right coming up to now the classes of uh, classes of uh, the types of uh, seizures that we have talked about already and i described e seizure to you in detail and now i'm just going to tell you the medicine that would be needed in order to treat it guys take it in your mind that the best therapy is a the monotherapy it means that you're just taking one drug okay if you're taking multiple drugs that can produce they can produce an interaction and everything okay i have jotted down this thing over here um in the third bullet point you can always um uh, stop it and then uh, read it okay ah the other um, important thing is this that it can have teratogenic effects right so if you remember teratogenic is all about um the deformation of fetus right and we don't want that to happen at all um good good rabi we are going to talk about it okay uh, all right um wait a minute rabi look when you were saying i know i i mistakenly slipped out from my mouth even that it's uh, antidepressant you see when you are giving an antidepressant it means that you're exciting and if you're excited in this condition so uh, literally it will create a bigger mess okay so we don't want excitation we want inhibition okay all right so guys you see over here we would have uh, we would be very careful of the teratogenic teratogenic effect okay and the second thing which we will take care of is suicidal thoughts okay so uh, there is always a black box warning on the medicine okay on the uh, packaging of the medicine okay and if you find uh, a black black box warning so you need to take care of it uh, very well okay because that's a serious warning that fda actually uh, ask the manufacturers to print on the packages okay all right now talking about partial seizures okay partial seizures like i said earlier it's localized okay and everything i'm not going to talk more about it uh and we have already discussed that the partial seizures can be of two types they can be simple they can be complex right and the drugs to treat them is either you treat them with phenytoin carbamazepine and lamotrigine or you treat them with valproic acid and phenobarbital then when we talk about generalized seizures then there's clona uh, <coughs> sorry tonic clonic seizures which is also called grand mal seizures okay so the medicine to treat this is uh, fentoin and carbamazepine topiramate and other uh, newer aeds a by aeds i mean anti epileptic drugs guys i have already attached um, the video on youtube okay that is related to types all right it's better that you first of all educate yourself for the types and then you watch this video if you are watching this in recording okay all right then is absence uh seizures which is also called petit mal seizures okay and to treat that we need ethosuximide uh, then we have valproic acid uh, clonazepam lamotrigine and topi uh, topiramate then we have myoclonic syndrome you know what is that okay and for, in order to treat it we uh, administer valproic acid and lamotrigine or the other newer drugs okay uh, then is the dangerous one that is status epilepticus okay and in order to treat it we um, we administer diazepam or lorazepam in the iv form okay and then we give iv uh, phosphenitoin okay 
or phenobarbital. So mechanism of action, like we said already, right? We want to block excitation, okay? So you see here, fentoin, uh, carbamazepine, valproic acid, and lamotrigrine, they, they all do one task and that is they block the sodium channels, okay? And they inhibit the generation of action potential. So their effect is use dependent that is related to their selective binding and prolongation of the inactivated state of sodium channel. So the thing is valproic acid at higher concentration reduces low threshold T-type calcium current. Now, if you remember uh, last year when I was teaching you about action potential and everything, I told you guys, and even I remember in the last semester, I told you guys that after reaching a certain action, uh, after reaching a, uh, uh, after reaching a certain millivolt, okay, uh, what happens is after after uh, depolarization and after reaching a certain threshold, uh, uh, sorry, after reaching a certain millivolts, what happens is uh, the calcium channels also open. Remember, uh, if you remember cardiac action potential, if you don't remember, you can always go back and revise that, okay? All right, so valproic acid, what it does is, no, uh, earlier, if it was opening up at plus 35, so it would lower it and it would start opening up the calcium channels at let's say plus 40, okay? So it's lowering the threshold, okay? So lamotrigrine probably has additional therapeutically relevant action. Uh, then is ethoxyzamide reduces the low threshold calcium channel, okay? And then barbiturates and benzodiazepine facilitate GABA-mediated inhibition. Uh, I think there's an entire lecture on GABA-mediated, um, uh, you know, medicine. So we are not talking about the mechanism here. I've just inserted the wordings here, okay? All right. Then we have fentoin and phosphentoin, okay? So fentoin is absorbed well after oral administration, but its rate and extent of absorption can be altered considerably by its formulation. So fentoin is 90% bound to plasma proteins. Hypoalbuminemia may result in a decrease in total, but not free plasma fentoin. Thus increasing the dose may be counterproductive and result in toxicity. Uh, then fentoin is metabolized by microsomal enzyme. By the way, I'll give you a list Tuba, please remind me, I had to post it in the Google Classroom, okay? I'll give you guys a list, okay? That what medicines are going to affect what microsomal enzymes, okay? Anyhow, so it's plasma half-life is approximately 24 hours at therapeutic doses. In some patients, metabolic enzymes become saturated at low doses and half-life increases dramatically as the dose and plasma concentration increase, resulting in a steady state mean plasma concentration that varies disproportion, uh, disproportionately with the dose. Now we have uh, fentoin may interfere with the test of thyroid function. So a steep dose response and low therapeutic index require that fentoin plasma levels uh, to be carefully mo uh, monitored, okay? Then we have uh, phosphentoin is available, is available for parenteral administration as a replacement for fentoin. Phosphentoin allows more rapid loading intramuscular administration and IV administration with minimal uh, vascular erosion. So the common adverse effects are uh, nystagmus. Now nystagmus is actually a vision condition, okay? And uh, vestagmus is related uh, to the eyeball movement, okay? When I, I move, let's say, left and right very abruptly, okay? And there's a repetitive uncontrolled movement of eye, okay? So the repetitive con uncontrolled movement of eye is called nystagmus, okay? Then we have diplopia, and that is related to or, uh, or you can say diplopia, okay? And that is related to double vision, okay? Ataxia 
absence a means absence okay and taxia means movement okay so that is ataxia then slurred speech blurred vision mental confusion then we have hirotism uh, if you remember i told you all i think previously that this condition is about uh, the development of um, facial hair in female okay just like men okay they develop that then we have uh, gingival, uh, gingival uh, hyperplasia and that is related to swelling of gums okay all right so the rare adverse effects are with long term use coarsening of uh, coarsening of facial features with mild peripheral neuropathy and osteomalacia due to alteration of vitamin d metabolism now peripheral neuropathy is about that uh, you can link it to paralysis okay that you can't feel your uh, limbs okay that is peripheral neuropathy okay and but that's going to be mild okay not a complete paralysis but uh, numbness you can say okay okay and that is osteo uh, malacia that is softening of bones due to alteration of vitamin d metabolism so then we have ide uh, idiosyncratic reactions and these are the reactions uh, of which you can say the mechanism is not known okay so idiosyncratic reactions requiring drug discontinuance it means that you just don't know what what is the wrong what is what's wrong happening within the body okay you just need to stop it because you know that as soon as you started to take the medicine this and that has started to happen okay all right then we have fetal malformation includes uh, growth retardation microcephaly and craniofacial abnormalities and is possibly due to epoxide metabolite of fentoin so you need to take care like i said in the beginning that some of these medicines are teratogenic okay so we need to be very much careful okay all right then we'll talk about drug interactions like i said before there are drug interactions so fentoin stimulates um, hepatic metabolism by a microsomal enzyme induction and thereby reduces plasma concentration of numerous drugs including other aeds such as carbamazepine and valproic acid and some antibiotics anti oral anticoagulants and oral contraceptives the plasma concentration of fentoin is increased by drugs that inhibits metabolism hepatic metabolism uh the plasma concentration of fentoin is decreased by drugs that stimulate hepatic metabolism then we have carbamazepine and Uh, ox carbamazepine ox carb carbazepine okay so carbamazepine has good oral absorption but there is significant interpatient variability in its rate of absorption an extended release preparation is available so it induces microsomal enzyme and increases its own hep hepatic clearance thus reducing its half life from 30 hours to 15 hours so gradual dose adjustment is required in early therapy okay so this it, it is a drug of choice to treat trigeminal uh, neuralgia it is also used to treat bipolar affective disorder ox carbazepine is a poor drug whose actions are similar to those of carbamazepine its activity is due to a 10 hydroxy metabolite with a half life of 10 hours it is a less potent inducer of hepatic microsomal enzymes than carbamazepine wait okay all right then we have adverse effects and toxicity so the common ones are diplopia ataxia gi disturbance and the occasional ones are retention or retention of water and hyponatremia rash agitation in children the rare one is 
uh, idiosyncratic blood distresses. So now you know the terminology idiosyncratic is about uh, a, con a reaction where you don't know the mechanism and blood distresses is about the uh, blood re reactions, right? Okay, and severe rashes. Um, wait a minute, everybody, please. All right. Okay, so we were here. When we talk about drug interactions, okay, so they induce microsomal enzyme and increase the hepatic clearance of numerous drugs, including fentoin, uh, valproic acid, and glass, and ether and ethosexamide, okay. Uh, fentoin may decrease the steady state carbamazepine through microsomal enzyme induction. Plasma concentration of carbamazepine is increased by drugs that inhibit its metabolism. Wait a minute. Thank you. Okay, now we have valproic acid, okay. So valproic acid is also used to treat bipolar affective disorder and is used for migraine prophylaxis. What is bipolar affective disorder? Do you remember that? What is bipolar affective disorder? Hmm. Okay. I'm waiting. Okay, very good. By physic depression. Okay. Anybody else? I wish we were in class and we can talk more about it. Happy and sad both traits you can have in this condition. Take care. I think we also discuss this class in, in a lot deep detail, right? Good, good, good girls. Very good. And I don't know why there is zero contribution and answers through boys. I don't know if in the online classes, I don't, I don't even know if I teach boys also. I just feel that I teach only girls. Even the tendons that I'm viewing right now, it's more girls and less boys. Tell them they won't be able to take exam, okay? If their attendance is not appropriate. Uh, all right, good. Good Rabia, Benazir and Amen and Anusha and everybody, super proud of you all. Okay, so wait a minute. Valproic acid inhibits the metabolism of other drugs, including fentoin, carbamazepine and Ethosexamide, uh, divalproic sodium is a one-to-one -one enteric uh, formulation of valproic acid and val valproate sodium that is absorbed more slowly than valproic acid. Okay, so the adverse effects are GI disturbance and hair loss, weight gain, sedation, ataxia, tremor at high doses, um, idiosyncratic hepatotoxicity, okay, which is fatal in infants uh, and in patients you, uh, using multiple anticonvulsants, fetal malformations, okay. So is, this is spina bifida and aura, uh, orofacial and cardiovascular anomalies have been reported. Then we'll talk about ethosexamide. So it is related to, uh, the absent seizures, okay, and uh, it is effective, okay, in in very few of the patients, okay. So, uh, ethosexamide is often the drug of choice because of its greater safety. Valproic acid inhibits its metabolism. So, the adverse effects are GI disturbance, fatigue, dizziness, idiosyncratic reactions, and blood, blood distresses. Then we have phenobarbital uh, at less than hypno uh, hypnotic doses is used most often as a first-line drug for 
neonatal seizures and for maintenance control of status epilepticus. Uh, on occasion, it is used for short-term treatment of febrile seizures in children. Uh, then we have benzodiazepines. So diazepam and lorazepam are highly effective in short-term treatment of the status epilepticus and uh, clonazepam is effective for the treatment of absent seizures. Clorazepate is used to treat complex partial seizures. Sedation is their major adverse effect. Uh, then we we'll talk about more of the anticonvulsant drugs. So we have lamotrigrine, which acts like fentoin and carbamazepine. It is used as a monotherapy for partial seizure. It is used for absent seizure, myoclonic seizure, and the Linux gastis, uh, uh, gastot syndrome. So its half-life is reduced by fentoin and carbamazepine, and it is increased by valproic acid. Its adverse effects include headache, ataxia, dizziness, and rarely a rash that may be life-threatening, especially in children. Uh, then we have... Uh, Wait a minute. Okay. All right. Then we have, uh, wait. Okay. We have gabapentin and pre uh, gab, uh, gabalin and gabapentin. Okay. So th this gabapentin, among other activities, increase GABA levels in the brain. Gabapentin is used as adjunctive therapy for partial and generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Its adverse effects include dizziness, ataxia, and tremor. Pregabalin, an analog of gabapentin, is used as adjunctive therapy for partial seizures. It binds to voltage-gated calcium channels and reduces release of excitatory neurotransmitters. Its major adverse effects are dizziness, dry mouth, uh, blurred vision, and a weight gain. So both are also used to treat uh, post-herpetic uh, post neuraglia, diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Uh, Pregabalin is used to treat uh, fibromyalgia. My okay, so we have Topiramate acts like fentoin and garbamazepine and may also facilitate the inhibitory action of GABA, among other actions. It is used as a monotherapy and as adjunctive therapy for partial and generalized tonic clonic seizures. It is used for the Linus Gestot syndrome. It is FDA approved for migraine headache prophylaxis. It suppresses weight loss and has been used to treat patients with eating disorders. So adverse effects include fatigue, nervous, nervousness, and memory dysfunction. Then we have diagabine. It's used as adjunctive therapy for partial seizures. It inhibits GABA. And when we talk about the, it, uh, the okay, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So when we talk about the adverse effects, okay, so it, the adverse effects are dizziness, confusion, and intaxia. Then we have uh, live tyracity, oh God. <laughs> okay, livi tyractum. Okay, so its mechanism of action is not known. It is used as adjunctive therapy for partial and generalized tonic-clonic seizures, for myoclonic seizures. And uh, adverse effects include dizziness, behavioral changes. Guys, I, I'm, I am totally aware of this thing that you must be thinking that, uh, oh my God, Ms. Pfizer is saying like uh, a name of a drug and then she's telling a name of a seizure and then she's going to other drug and then she's telling two names of the seizures. So the best way to do is this, that first of all, you list down name of seizures and in front of that, you, uh, you know, list down the drugs of the, the name of the drugs, okay? I'll try to produce it for you. Otherwise, any one of you produce it, send it to me, and then I'll upload that in the Google Classroom, okay? All right. Then we have lacosamide acts by an undetermined 
mechanism. It is used as adjunctive therapy to treat partial seizures. The adverse effects are diplopia, dizziness, uh, GI disturbances, and headache. Then we have uh, isogabine. It increases potassium channel opening. It is used as adjunctive therapy to treat partial seizures. Its adverse effects are blurred vision, confusion, and bladder dysfunction. Then we have rufinamide. It acts like fentoin and carbamazepine, and it is used as adjunctive therapy to treat Lennox gastus uh, uh, gastot um, syndrome. So the adverse effects are vomiting, diarrhea, and sedation. Then we have filbamate. Um, it is used very li uh, limited, okay, um, due to development of aplastic anemia and severe hepatitis with liver failure, okay. Then we have uh, zonisamide, it acts at the sodium channel, okay, and possibly by voltage dependent calcium channels, and adverse effects are drowsiness, confusion, and rashes. Okay, I attach this here. That is it, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, what I must advise you all is that you see, uh, even in Lipin Court, okay, um, in the summary, you can see that they have made a table, okay, and they have listed down name of seizures, and then they have given the therapy, okay. So the table is there in the book, okay. Even I can produce a table for you. You just have to memorize it and learn it by heart, okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Allah Hafiz.